Hello there. I welcome you back to another episode on Time Out with the Press. I remain your humble and your beautiful host, Melanin Blessing. Thank you very much for liking and commenting on our first talk show. I saw everybody's comments. I saw everything you had to say about me and my post. Thank you very much. And on today's show, I have a public figure as my guest. A lawyer, a boarding speaker, a prolific writer, a conflict resolution specialist, a social engineer. A lot to say about my guest. Meet him yourself. How we meet you, sir? Oh, good day. Good day, sir. Yeah, my name is Tosin Aya. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a legal practitioner. I'm an energy law specialist. I'm a real estate lawyer. And I also lecture at the Kitty State University, Department of uh, Jurisprudence and International Faculty of the State University. You heard from the liar's mouth himself. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that I was, I was not hyping you. I said the real truth about my guests. Okay, so thank you very much for being on our show today, sir. Yeah, okay, fair. let's have it today. Let's go to the business of today, sir. Okay. Can you take us down the memory lane? What moved you into saying, okay, yes, I want to take law as this career. I want to become a lawyer. With every, because I'm very sure while in secondary school, friends will have said I wanted to study medicine, I want to go for nursing, but you said no, if mm. it's not law, it's nothing else. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just say my story is an intriguing one. Um, I, a lot of people call me an accidental lawyer. Huh. People that knew me from primary secondary school knew me as a core scientist. In fact, I all my subjects in the secondary school days were basically science subjects. Mm. And I'm, I can proudly say, that I'm one of those few lawyers who have never been under any literature in English class. Wow. From our training in literature in English. I studied literature in English um, as a self tutored candidate. You know, then I was already in sciences, it's pre degree science for those who could still remember. Some of my lecturers are still there, you know, on the level. Because in 200 level, you know, those times I'll write articles, people from the press, from sciences will come and say, this guy doesn't write like a scientist. I think there's something you know, different. different about the way he writes, that he has you know, a high for the, arts, for the arts. So I took it upon myself. I went back, I studied for a GC, and um, I saw a, a particular space that states that uh, special marks are awarded for clarity of expression and logical presentation of ideas. And most of the books that we are, they were asking, Macbeth, Shakespeare, Lan, and the Jewel, they were things I read as a science student and then as a self taught candidate. So I took them home. And uh, incidentally, when I went to check the result, they told me nobody passed the literature in English except one person. I said, that should be me. Mm. And it was me, quite all right. So uh -huh. then I took back that journey, I went back. And in the same university, you know how it is, people are already seeing you in 300, 400 levels, yeah, to go back, back to 100 again. levels. But I knew what I wanted. And mm -hmm. I always tell people that no matter how you know, wrong you have gone down, the, how long you have gone down the wrong direction, you can always make a U-turn. Mm -hmm. And today, I'm not just a lawyer, I'm doing well as a lawyer. Yeah, I can also see very well, sir. Okay, and sir, I am one big admirer of your fashion sense. <laughs> I must say that. I like. That. 100% I am a very, very big admirer of it. Thank you. So I don't know if there's anybody in the legal industry or the fashion industry that you look up to okay. with this fashion set, or should we give the kudos to the mother of your children that <laughs> she's the one with everything, okay. every person we see you with every day? Okay, uh, there's, there are a lot of influences in my life. Um, yes, I always believe that um, you don't need to announce your parents if, you are not, if your parents announces itself. Yeah. And um, apart from the fact that um, I believe that life itself is 95% presentation, because sometimes, even Oscar Wilde said, it is only the deep, it is only the shallow who doesn't judge my parents. Because sometimes our parents might be the only thing there is yeah. to a thing. You know, my dad, you know, my dad is an impeccable dress dresser, you know. He was a retired permanent secretary. Anytime he goes to work, his clothes are always dry clean. Mm. You know, all those old women, you know, the man is always appearing and proper, you know. And also need to, uh, then there's also Professor Epiphany Azing, Epiphany Azing, I think he used to be the director general of the Nigerian Law School, uh, Institute of Advanced Legal, Legal Studies. You know, the way he appears, there was someone that was comparing me to him, you know, people that have like different kind of suits, you know, different days, they just appear again. It's just a style, it's a signature, you know, and there's these stereotypes with practitioners, legal practitioners, and even academia, they just assume that you're supposed to look one kind of okay. way, scoffy looking, assuming that there cannot be intellectual content if you are not well dressed. It doesn't, there's no nexus between how you look and mm, what and the content of the event, yeah. you know. So basically, then Professor Motola too, uh, you know, February that he, the car he drives matches the color of his vehicle, you know, <laughs> things like that. You know, and he was a law lecturer. But the truth is, 
the academia will not give you the kind of money to sustain that kind yeah. of fashion sense. And that's why you need to look in what's find, you know, another kind of it can be related to your course, you know. We teach for passion, but we also do business to look good. Mm, that's that's <laughs> it's very, very, very good Thank to you. hear, sir. And I hope to see more and more of the fashion, <laughs> fashion, fashion killing them. Yeah. Uh, incidentally, I think I, I, I've won it several, you know, the best dress academia, the best academician, dress. you know, most uh, fashionable academic personality of the year, all these awards. Uh, you know, right. Italy, very soon, yeah. international awards <laughs> of that kind of thing is good to come in. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's go on a short break and be right back. Thank you. Speaking of this fashion sense, I'm very sorry I have to like <laughs> I was just talk the fashion sense, fashion I sense. Okay, I, I I have this idea that you are an IP lawyer. Yes, um, okay. I'm so how do you like connect this fashion and creativity into IP law? Okay, let's just say Many times, many of us, you know, we don't just buy m most of these clothes. We, yes, sir. I'm a social media influencer too, you know, and on face value, when people just say things on you, you tag, you know, the okay, yeah. and, and all that. But the truth is, I always advise many of my clients, you know, and that is one in incisive thing about me. I see opportunities where others don't, you know, mm -hmm. on something as basic. If I sell a land to you, I'm already looking at how to resell it to you. You know, to, you know, you have bought a land from me, I help you resell it. I help you once you get money. I'm already introducing another yeah. opportunity. You can't just keep that money. You know, you just yeah. have to be creative. Yeah. And it's the same thing with my clients. You know, if I've made clothes from you, I'm already telling you, patent your monogram. Mm -hmm. All these your ideas. Don't just let it be. You know, because we are a nation where we don't really enforce many of our laws and regulations. Yeah. Because anything goes. You can imagine there was a time you book a war. Also, that is like that. Yes. Incidentally, yes. I wanted that better before. Him. Mm -hmm. One year, eight months before it's even trying mm -hmm. to tell you that I'm ahead, but I'm not a celeb in that sense. In that sense yes. But the truth is, the guy that made that clothes for me, you know, he didn't pick it. You know, many times we just pick ideas and just say, okay, try this, try yeah. that. The only difference with that was that it wasn't hung here like his one. So basically, you just interact with some of these people. Even artisans, you know, they gave you a different design. You tell them, we can help you pretend this, copyright mm -hmm. this, so that at least you get something. But Incidentally, that is law as it should be. That is not law in practice. Mm -hmm. Most times, and many times over, you can even have some of these patents and who is taking you to court. You know, just like you get it for instance, people don't really go to court. They will tell you, yeah. ah, the person you are taking to court is your lost uncle's brother's father. Mm -hmm. you know, somebody will start, will start calling you, ah, that lawyer is a federal and all that. Mm -hmm. But basically, you still need to introduce those opportunities. And I believe one day we will get there. But there's always an exit, you know. Mm -hmm. Because art itself, I'm an artistic person. You know, I can design what I want to wear and I'll show my tailor. You interpret it. And That's I'll tell very, you, very Nice. Just this idea, you know. And basically, uh, I don't do much, but mentally I already have like an area of what I'm going to wear for the next two, three, four weeks. Wow. You know, so I don't basically <laughs> need to just go into the world of the land, you know. Mentally, I would have said, okay, the color combination has to be right, you know. Yeah. Basically, and, and, and I notice that you will notice that it is effortless. You know, it is only when you are trying to do too much that yes. you end up looking like a yes. masquerade. Yes, you know, But then you just pick this, pick, pick this, that, and all that. And, that, you know, you know. and it's also instrumental too because I remember that we we're not really inspired when we we're growing up. You see, teacher, you know, this doesn't look like a future that you want yeah. and all that. But now you just need to inspire confidence in your students too mm -hmm. and say, okay, one day I want to teach, one day I want to look like this because it's not just about the language of instruction or the quality of your teaching. Your parents also compliment it. Of course. Because the message is as important as the message. Yes. That's just it, basically. Even pastors of today <laughs> say, if, they, if, you, if you have a pastor and does not judge to top notch, I'm very sure you know what to say, come you to our church. Pastor, you I can. want to invite you to He's our church. To um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, sir, I have this particular question okay. for you. Aside from being everything, this lawyer, that thing, that one, yeah. why did you choose being like a lecturer? Okay. It's also your profession. Okay. Uh, let me just say that a number of factors. Incidentally, I've not applied anywhere outside the academia before to work because I knew that on my own, wherever I am, I could, you know, make a few things with my, you know, personality, my business sense and all that. But I've identified one major problem with our educational sector and it's to the effect that those who teach do not know 
those who know do not teach. When you look at it, the average of people that graduate top notch of their classes, they get hijacked by the banking industry, the oil industry, nobody goes back to teach. And there's this legal maxim, Nemo that could not have bet, you cannot give what you do not have. If there is no quality of success and intellect and excellence in the head, there's no way you can transmit it to the incoming generation. So I took it upon myself to sacrifice myself by giving the little that I know so that those who are coming can also learn something. And there are a few things I felt should be corrected when I was, you know, you know, a student. And I felt, you know, this there's this disconnect between lecturers and students that I didn't like okay. and I wanted to correct it with my own experience. And I believe that the best kind of life you can make is that whilst you're making a living, you also make a life. Mm -hmm. You know, you can imagine the kind of goodwill that uh, a court state when you have taught governors, you have taught presidents, you have taught attorneys general, you have taught almost everybody okay. in the world. It has nothing to do with you just making money. But whatever it is, you are giving back. And that's why even after the first uh, missionary journey and there was a disengagement in Exo, I was still doing my business, but I knew I was going to teach. Because I always tell people, you need to know who you are. I know I'm a professor. It's the only difference is that I've not yet been made a professor. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's in my head. It doesn't matter whether I'm there or not. You know, even talking about it you know, as a passion, I felt like even after making all the money, doing all the business, I would still return to the classroom. It's something I enjoy doing. I love to impart, I love to talk, I love to interact. I love to make impact on people's lives. And I believe that the whole essence of uh, contact is impact. What is the essence of it that I've taught you? And there has nothing you have either gained in my life or gained from my experiences with you. And with my international educational exposure, I discovered that there is a great disconnect. There's a gulf of difference between how people interact with their teachers, their lecturers, and how we do it here. There's this glorified um, worship that we do to lecturers and teachers here. You, know, you can imagine the person that taught me at the University of Aberdeen, was the head of school, like a vice chancellor. We didn't know until our graduation. Mm. You know, we were not even calling her a professor. Her name is Marianne Slatter. Until she presented me with my certificate. That was when I knew that that was the head of school. Is it possible for you not to know your HOD? Mm -hmm. You know, with puffed shoulders and you know, the interactions, you will know that this is, you know, there's that assertiveness. Yeah. You know, there should be that chemistry. That's when you can connect and know people. You could address your supervisor by his or her first name. But you can't do that here, except <laughs> you want to graduate with Marshall. So those are some of the things you understand that in lecturing, it's good. But, you know, just understand that as you are making a living, also make sure that you are making a life. Mm -hmm. That's just my philosophy. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Our guest says, once you are making a living, make sure you are also getting a life. Let's go on a short break. I'll be right back with our game show. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back, and now it's time for game show. If I say game show, you say let's play. Game show. Let's play. Game show. Let's play. Okay, so the game show I have for you now is Widows. Okay. One to five. So you okay. pick a number from number one to five, and I'll tell, I'll read out the Widows for you and tell me the answer. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm Okay, one to five, any number? Two. Okay, okay. I am always hungry. I must always be fed. The finger I touch will soon turn red. What am I? We are always hungry, yeah? Yeah, and I must always be fed. Okay. The finger I touch will soon turn red. What am I? Mosquito? No. <laughs> I think mosquito is I am something. Yeah. I... That, you clap for me before I die. Yeah, That's mosquito. I so... Mama, I've really left this generation. Hey! <laughs> okay, oh yeah. No idea. No, no. Um, I am always hungry. Yes. I must always be fed. Yes. The finger I touch will soon turn red. What am I? The finger I touch will soon turn, turn red. red. Oh my. Hmm. It's really got me to bed. <laughs> oh my, that is 1,000. The finger I touch, like anything, that thing, when it touches the hand, will soon turn red. The finger I touch will turn red. Okay, give me clues. Should I tell you the first and the last? No, don't tell me. That one is not true. Um, okay, now. There's this thing that, there's no way. Anytime you are working in the kitchen, it always comes on. You have to like always make it come on. Okay. What's the thing? If, I, if I'm cooking like this, that thing must be on. Gas. What's coming out of that gas that will make my hand turn red? Fire. Yeah, fire. Oh, no. How did I know? I am always hungry. I must be fed. The finger I touch will soon turn red. What am I? Fire. Wow. Okay, so let me give you the last question here. I have keys, but open no locks. I have space, but no room. You can enter, but can't go outside. What am I? I have key, 
locks. But open no locks. Okay. I have space, but no room. You can enter, but can't go outside. What am I? Jeepers. No. I have. I have keys. Yeah, but I open no locks. I have space, but no room. You can enter, but I can't go outside. What am I? Piano. Another word for piano? Keyboard. Uh, that should be. Yes, keyboard. Yes, keyboard. <laughs> Tough keyboard. Not yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's the end of reduce. One more. But that's 50 50. <laughs> I'll get you. Don't worry. You better mark your script. <laughs> <laughs>